please the court. My name is Kyle Carney. I and my co-counsel, Bryson Bursey, represent Tabba Kuba, the appellees in this case. I will address the first issue involving likelihood of confusion and priority. My co-counsel will address the second issue involving primarily geographically deceptively misdescriptive marks. In this case, the district court correctly granted summary judgment for the benefit of American consumers on our unfair competition claim for the following two reasons. First, Tabba Kuba has priority in the Contra Maestra mark. Second, Exquitevac's Contra Maestra in Colorado Maduro mark is likely to cause confusion among the relevant consumer population. Before I get into the priority issue, I'd like to direct the court's attention to a few misstatements that my friend made on the priority issue. First, my friend stated that brief non-use indicates abandonment to consumers. That's a misstatement of the law. If anything, brief non-use only makes out a prima facie case of abandonment. And once I get to that issue, I'll show you how that's rebutted. And who determines this non-use? This is being done ex post facto. I mean, who makes that determination that this is the non-use? That's my friend's burden to bring evidence towards the non-use to make a prima facie case. And then the burden shifts to my client to produce evidence that there was an intent to resume use or actual use to defeat the abandonment claim. My friend also incorrectly focuses on illegal use as being non-use in the intent to resume use discussion under abandonment. Either actual use or intent to resume use within a reasonably foreseeable future can negate an abandonment claim. And illegal use can satisfy that. It's not actual use, but it is evidence towards intent to resume use within a reasonably foreseeable future. Another misstatement of the law of abandonment is that non-use is equivalent, tantamount to the well-known doctrine not being applied. That's just mixing the discussion of abandonment, non-abandonment issue with the well-known Marx doctrine, which is an alternative ground on which this court could find priority for my client, Tabit Cuba. Then before moving on to the priority issue, I would also like to address just two points on the likelihood of confusion issue. My friend correctly states that sight, sound, and meaning are important to finding similarity of the Marx, but then her analysis focuses only on the sight of the Marx. For some reason, she takes the analysis out of the context of where the Marx are and focuses only on the words in a vacuum and the sight. The second point is just that the differences in focusing on the E in absolute is possibly in a different case relevant where perhaps the differences would be weighed more heavily. But in this case, when the similarity of the products and the similarity of goods and channels and trades of advertising and sales are the same and the goods are the same, then in that case, and the strength of the Marx as well, having a well-known, widely known Marx among cigar aficionados in the relevant consumer population, then the similarities are to be weighed more heavily than the differences. So I'd like to- Do you have a case site to support that? Yes, Brookfield Communications versus West Coast Entertainment. The Ninth Circuit states that exact phrasing that on those issues in regards to looks aren't everything. You also need to consider the Marx, sight, sound, and meaning. And then in regards to weighing how you should weigh the similarities versus the differences, it goes into once you have a strong Marx, then the similarities should be weighed more heavily than differences. Was there a survey? Not in this case, Your Honor. And the district court found that the actual confusion element weighed in favor of my friends, but still weighing all the factors found likelihood of confusion to be the case. And if Your Honor would like, I can move to the second factor before we go to priority on likelihood of- on the second element of our unfair competition claim and likelihood of confusion. The Tabby Cuba has shown and the district court correctly weighed once the court considers all of the factors involved, strength of similarities of the Marx, strength of Tabby Cuba's Marx, similarity of trade products and similarity of the goods, bad faith 
of ex post back and adopting the mark should weigh heavily on the court's mind as ex post back knew if you check page set, seven of the record ex post back adopted the mark to capitalize on the popularity of contra maestra in the american market they were previously using uh, puerto and plymouth dominican republic geographic indicators and then changed in order to capitalize off the popularity of the Contra Maestro Cuban mark in the, among the American public. So bad faith here should, weighing all the similarities of these marks and uh, Would the it be bad faith if they were using the seeds and the equipment and the plants? And in other words, they were not passing something off as Contra Maestro, or are you suggesting that they were? I, I think that your, your Honor's point actually cuts in our favor because once you uh, examine the fact that the, the record stipulates all the goodwill of our predecessor CTE, where our priority stems from, it is given to Tabacuba. And once you consider that that previous knowledge and intimate association with our predecessors that appellant has, that actually shows that appellant had intimate knowledge of, of the mark and, and that knowledge of the popularity of Contra Maestro should cut against them in, in the bad faith analysis. So uh, moving back, and also the, there, are no, uh, there, there are no issues of material fact and dispute in this case, and this court, if it would like to, could reconsider the legal conclusions of the district court and even reinforce its finding of summary judgment on the likelihood of confusion claim. For, for example, in actual confusion, uh, the district court found no evidence of that. However, there are inferences to be drawn from the fact that the uh, experts are back. There was a survey that 30% of Americans were confused by it. That, that survey what wasn't done of the the mark itself that was about the uh, which cigars, it, could they tell the differences between the cigars? And the quality of the products doesn't really go to this answering this question. Uh, it has to do whether they would be confused only by the Contra Maestro mark. And the, um, well, whenever the, the court though can look at the inference from the time of adopting the Contra Maestro mark in 1999, and draw the inference that that adoption is an intentional copying of Tabacuba's well-known mark. So there, there's actual confusion once their Expos of Bax mark was only well-known and uh, truly prized by cigar aficionados and connoisseurs, and, and then their sales went up and became very expensive. I would like to, at this time, move to the not, uh, abandonment issue in this case. Ta Tava Cuba obtained priority in the mark through his predecessor CT's first in time use in 1938 and, and then continued use in uh, American commerce, al albeit What's your illegally. To your opposing counsel's contention that you all grew sugar cane there for a number of years and abandoned your claim to, to have this be a cigar kingdom? Yes, Your Honor. That, that is m my friend's. Uh, sort of redirect misfocusing the court's attention to a prima facie case of abandonment, but a simple few years of non-use is merely prima facie. three years is enough, is that not correct? For a prima facie case. So then once that prima facie case is established, then we have the opportunity to show either actual use to uh, rebut that claim after the three years, or we can also show intent to reasonably resume use in the, excuse me. actual use? We, I would contend that this court could consider illegal use as actual use in an abandonment claim. Even though it doesn't establish initial priority, the court could consider illegal use as um, what is abandonment. Illegal use? Who, where does the illegality stem from? It, illegal? This goes to the American consumer's familiarity with the Contra Maestro mark. They actually go outside of the United States to places like Mexico where the product is not banned and bring the marked cigars back into the United States, and the record demonstrates on page seven where U.S. Customs has obtained tens of thousands of them. So b because of this non-abandonment, uh, non uh, rebutting the presumption of the prima facie case with intent to reasonably resume use in the foreseeable future by uh, 
continuous use, extensive advertising, as you see on page 13 of the record, uh, that allows us to, the court to find priority for Tabacuba. For those reasons, I would ask the court to affirm summary judgment for Tabacuba. Thank you.